On today's Winning Cures Everything, we are talking all things Conference USA. Win totals, team previews, uh, my predictions on their season, who they're going to lose to, who they're going to beat, etc. The two teams that will play for the conference title, all kinds of things. Coming up on Winning Cures Everything. It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. All right. I know we just did a new show not that long ago, but it's time to get into it. Welcome in to Winning Cures Everything. Brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. Of course, we've got a lot to talk about, about Conference USA. This is the conference preview for CUSA. Uh, Bet US, there is a link in the description. Go ahead and get signed up. Uh, you can sign up, and you will get a $50 uh, free play, I guess is what it's called. Uh, but go ahead and sign up for that. No deposit required. Go take care of it. We talk news and rumors all year round about college football here, but this is one of those shows where we are previewing one of the conferences. We're going to get through all of them. We've already done the independents. We've already done uh, the MAC as well. Now we're getting into July or getting close to it. We're going to get through all the rest. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Conference USA. All right, let's roll in. Number one on the list the FIU Panthers. Florida International, Mike McIntyre, of course, uh, great year last year. I know they only won four games, but considering what this roster is, that was a pretty good season. Let's go ahead and bring it up on the screen so you can see what we're looking at. Four and eight, they went five and seven against the spread. Post-game win expectancy last year was 2.48 wins and 9.52 losses. They went two and six in the conference. Uh, their projected record this year, just averaging out all the different people uh, or all the different uh, win probabilities, not averaging. What am I talking about? Adding up the win probabilities, 4.38 and 7.62. I don't feel as highly about them. You look at the numbers from last year. I mean, they were just not good, and they lost a lot of key guys. I know their returning production numbers look good, 44, or number 44 in the country, uh, just over 66%. Uh, or just a touch less than 67%. That's number two in the conference. Uh, on offense, number 68 in returning production. Defense, number 56. This is adjusted returning production, so it accounts for transfers, et cetera. Um, let's start off with the offense. Uh, David Yost, the offensive coordinator, uh, number 113 PPA per drive last year. It, they were not great at running the ball, number 108 uh, rushing success rate, number 87 passing success rate. But they were explosive. So number 63 in explosive play right there. Um, you know, you're losing Tyrese Chambers. You're losing uh, Lexington Joseph, who tore his ACL. Uh, yeah, you got you got all kind of guys that you're not going to have this year. So that's definitely not good. They lost 50% around about of their offensive line snaps, 47% of their receiving targets, and 67% of their rushing yards last year. Um, they were number 38 in rushing explosiveness last year. I don't think they're going to meet that this year. They took a lot of risks last year. Mike McIntyre understands what this team is, right? That's the biggest thing is understanding that, hey, we don't have the best roster, so we're going to have to take risks in order to uh, potentially win some games that we're not supposed to. They were number 22 in fourth down attempts per game. Uh, they lost their top two running backs, top two wide receivers, three of their top five offensive linemen. Grayson James, the quarterback, comes back, but I don't know how much to expect from him. Um, you know, you look at the defense. Uh, lost two of their top three tacklers to transfer, their top defensive back and their top linebacker. Uh, they were number 56 in explosiveness allowed, but that was because teams didn't really have to try big plays against them, right? You look at it, number 115 in defensive PPA per drive allowed. Uh, they were number 116 in rushing success allowed, number 107 in passing success allowed. Uh, but they did pretty good at stopping the explosive play. As I said, it's I don't think the teams really had to try big plays on them. They could just methodically get down the field. Uh, the secondary was not great. Number 117 in passing down success, number 127 in passing down PPA. 
It's a little bit different than passing success rate, of course. It, looking at this, they were number four in the country in luck rank last year, according to teamrankings.com. That includes turnover margin, uh, the time that you get certain turnovers, other team missing field goals, uh, other teams you know not getting fourth downs, injury luck, all that kind of stuff just wrapped up into one little ball, and that's what you got. Was number four in the country in luck rank, and they still only went four and eight last year. Again, post game win expectancy said uh, less than two and a half wins. It was two point four eight wins. So, uh, looking at keys to the season here, you know they're they're projected favorites in three games. Their win total sits at three. Uh, we're not even going to talk about their conference odds. They're sitting at plus six thousand right now. Look, to go over the three is minus 140. To go under is plus 110. Um, let's look at these keys to the season again. Team had lost 18 of 19 before they hired McIntyre. They got a taste of winning last year. Uh, their wins were by an average of 10.5 points. Their losses were by an average of 32.9. Um, I would, You could say that the wins were kind of fluky. They got two of them in overtime. Um, the returning production numbers are confusing, right? They they've got you know a lot back, I guess overall, but their key guys are gone. Uh, I trust McIntyre long term, but this is a hard job, and the the roster is still not good. Uh, I've got them winning against Maine, and I've got them beating UTEP at home. Other than that, this is a pretty tough schedule. I mean, you got to go to Arkansas, to Middle Tennessee, to Sam Houston. You got to play at UConn, at Louisiana Tech. I expect all those to be difficult. And then at home, you get Jacksonville State, who just got Zion Webb back. Uh, you got Western Kentucky at home. You got Liberty at home. You got North Texas at home. I I don't see how they get there. Like, maybe you can get one more, um, maybe against Sam Houston, or maybe Middle Tennessee is dealing with some stuff. Uh, but either one of those is going to be on the road. So I'm going to go under the three here. Uh, I... I don't feel great about FIU this year, but definitely going to go under the three at plus 110 uh, for Mike McIntyre's next year. I think he's building something, but but it's not quite there yet. Uh, so yeah, two and 10 is my predicted record. The ceiling for him, maybe six and six. Like maybe Grayson James is that dude. Uh, but the floor is also really, really low. I've got him one in 11 as far as a floor goes because at best, you beat Maine, or I guess at worst, you only beat Maine and then you lose to everybody else. Uh, it's going to be a long year. It's going to be a long year for uh, for Mike McIntyre and Bunch. The Jacksonville State Gamecocks had a great year in their last year in FCS under first-year head coach Rich Rodriguez. So let's dive into the numbers here. You look at what they bring back. And that's number 57 in the country in adjusted returning production, number 88 on offense, number 29 on defense. Uh, defense brings back over 72% of their returning production. Uh, you're losing guys like uh, Stevante Tullis. Uh, you're losing guys like the running back Matt LaRoche. Um, you got some you got some dudes that you're not going to have. There's not a lot of depth at quarterback. Aaron McLaughlin is gone. But positive sign, Zion Webb is back. So that's a good thing, right? Um, you look at their overall numbers last year and you put them in with, you know, obviously they played an FCS schedule last year, but you put in the numbers and it's pretty good compared to the rest of FBS. Now, these are just raw numbers, so let's not get crazy, but number seven in PPA margin, that's pretty good, especially against the competition, right? Uh, a lot of Conference USA teams are playing very similar schedules. I mean, you saw an FCS team come in last year and absolutely bang on some teams, and that was James Madison. They started out fantastic in the Sun Belt last year, and that is considered a wildly superior conference than Conference USA. So looking at the numbers, let's start on offense. Rod Smith is the offensive coordinator here. Um, they went 9-2 and two last year. The postgame win expectancy was 8.09 and 2.91. Uh, they were They were good. Now, their projected record this year, not as good uh, because of the step up, right? This schedule is eh, fairly difficult. You know, you've got UTEP at Coastal Carolina, Eastern Michigan, all within your first four games. 
I, you got some tough games at South Carolina, Louisiana Tech, et cetera, Liberty, et cetera. Um, starting on offense here, uh, Smith was the offensive coordinator for Rodriguez at Arizona. He was uh, Levy Smith's offensive coordinator at Illinois. So, you know, the guy's been around. He knows what he's doing. Uh, Zion Webb is the biggest X factor here, right? He got his seventh year of eligibility from the NCAA. He won his appeal. Um, if he gets hurt, there is no depth. Now, I would imagine Rodriguez is going to have some kind of a plan. Uh, Rod Smith will have some kind of a plan. We have seen this before uh, because those guys just take the pieces that they've got and find a way to move the ball no matter what. Whether you got a quarterback that can throw or not, they'll find a way to get it down the field. They don't care. Uh, they do return four starting offensive linemen, so that's good, along with the leading running back, uh, Anwar Lewis, and they got four of their top five leading receivers back. Uh, this team leans on the run. I doubt they're going to be quite as run heavy this year, uh, considering the depth of quarterback, but we'll see. It was 69.6% .6 of their offensive plays were runs last year. Uh, as far as the defense goes, Defense was not bad. They weren't very good against the explosive play, number 119 in explosive play rate allowed. Uh, but you look at everything else, number 38 PPA per drive allowed, number 25 rushing success allowed, number 41 passing success allowed. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. Uh, Zach Alley is the defense coordinator. He was a GA at Clemson, linebackers coach at Boise, and then he was the DC at Louisiana Monroe. Uh, six of the top seven defensive backs return in the secondary. They got some JUCO transfers coming in, so I would imagine that'll help some, especially in a conference like this. Uh, they're returning 80% of their quarterback pressures this year, almost 90% of their tackles for loss, and then over 85% of their sacks from last year. Defensive line was really good at stopping the run uh, in 2022. You know, against an FBS schedule, are they going to be as effective? You know, in Conference USA, yeah, probably. You're probably not going to be able to do that against South Carolina. Probably not going to be able to do that as well against Coastal Carolina, depending on whether or not they keep some of the same schemes that Chadwell had there. But either way, uh, you got some tough offenses right out of the gate. I think it's going to be a bit of a culture shock early, but we'll see how they develop throughout the season. Um, you know, Webb is a key player. The running back, Lewis, wide receiver, Galvin. Uh, you got defensive end, Hartle, and the safety, uh, Colby Fukua. I hope I say that right. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, the projected favorites here. They're only a projected favorite in one game this year. Now, they've got a ton of toss-ups. they got five toss-ups here. I think this team is going to be better than what the numbers are telling us right now. Just to guess. I think they're going to be a little bit better than that. Uh, I've got them at five and seven this year. So, they, they weren't going to make a bowl anyway. Uh, you know, the, the win total sits at five. I, if I had to lean away, I guess I would go under. But I mean, you kind of out Rich Rodriguez at your own, you know, at your own peril. Uh, let's look at the keys here. They need to find more balance between consistency and explosiveness. You know, looking at what they did last year, uh, a lot of running, et cetera. It, you need to use that passing game a little bit more effectively. Um, it, the offense is going to remain aggressive. For sure, defense is going to need to improve a bit to help out the offense, especially, you know, limiting explosives. Uh, it can't be stated how, you know, how important Webb coming back was. Like him winning that appeal, uh, it could be the difference between six wins. It could be the difference between, you know, three wins. So, you know, looking at the record prediction here, uh, I've got him going five and seven, as I said. Uh, the ceiling, I think, is six and six. Uh, I think the floor could be two and ten. This is an interesting team to pay attention to this year. I'm uh, I'm very interested to see what Jacksonville State does. The Liberty Flames, pretty good season last year. Uh, maybe underperformed in some games that they should have won easily, and overperformed in some other games against tough competition. But no more Hugh Freeze anymore. So let's see what happens. This go round with new coach Jamie Chadwell. Bring it up on the screen here so you can see what we're talking about. Went eight and five last year, lost the bowl game to Toledo. Of course, the team, the program was in disarray a little bit after Hugh Freeze left to become the head coach at Auburn. Uh, 
But yes, just kind of a, a mess. You look at their post game win expectancy last year, it was right where it was supposed to be. You know, 7.16. It was a touch under uh, the eight and four that they had in the regular season, but 7.16 and 4.84. Uh, their projected record this year is better because they have got the softest schedule in the country. You look at who they open up with Bowling Green, New Mexico State, at Buffalo, at FIU, and then Sam Houston and at Jacksonville State. I mean, this is, it, it doesn't get, uh, it doesn't get a lot easier than this, and I know that this is a tough year, um, but hey, it is what it is. I've got a lot of faith in Jamie Chadwell this year. Let's go on and talk about the offense here. You look at what they did last year, number 90 in PPA per drive, but they were number 43 in explosive play rate. I think that Bennett or Salter is going to be able to run Chadwell's option-based offense. I don't think it takes that long. You know, Willie Korn and uh, Newland Isaac – those guys are able to implement a system that utilizes whatever the strengths are of the players that you got on the roster. So I have full faith in those guys. Uh, I think I think the skill that's on this roster is going to work brilliantly in this scheme. Um, Salter, more of a runner. Bennett, more of a passer. We'll see exactly who they end up going with. But I, I've got a lot of faith in the offense here. Uh, the offense was already good at running the ball. We'll just, we'll just say that. So they're already built for this. Uh, moving over to the defense, uh, Jack Curtis, by the way, no longer on the staff, so it's Skylar McGee's defense. Uh, they're replacing seven starters on defense, uh, but they're, you know, on top of that, they're they're losing a ton of guys. They had to bring in some transfers. Um, they, they lost two guys that combined for 41 tackles for loss last year. I mean, it's just tough. Uh, there's not a lot of proven disruptors. Uh, they do have a talent advantage over almost everyone in the conference. Their luck rank last year was number 37. Uh, they stayed in some games they probably shouldn't have, but they lost some games that they probably should have won. Uh, key players, Day-Day Hunter, going to be back. The quarterbacks, of course, I brought those guys up. They got four starting offensive linemen back. They got uh, Frith and Daniels at wide receivers. So they got skill talent for days. Uh, but let's let's look at the schedule. Let's look at the you know keys to the season here. Going to get me off the screen. The keys to the season. Uh Jamie Chadwell went 31-6 and six at Coastal the last three years, and he comes into a conference where he already has the advantage. This is the strongest program in the conference already. So I would think talent advantage, et cetera, I, I believe in this much. Uh, defense was really good last year, by the way, but I, again, you're losing a bunch of guys. So we'll see what that does. Uh, you know, again, easiest schedule in the country. Like, it's, it's almost not even close. Uh, the win total is set at nine. I'm going to go over it. I, I see where they could lose at Western Kentucky. That's a difficult one. But you get Louisiana Tech at home. Uh, Buffalo, I, I think that Liberty, by the third game of the season, could be in a position to be better than Buffalo. Um, I've got them losing at Jacksonville State. But at the same time, I mean, even if they... Even if they win that one, maybe they lose to Middle Tennessee. Maybe you lose to uh, Louisiana Tech or somebody else. Like they're stronger than everybody else on this schedule. Uh, the question is, of course, how quickly can Chad Will's coaching click? That's the biggest question. So my record prediction uh, prediction here is ten and two. I think the ceiling for this team is probably twelve and zero. Like they could win at Western Kentucky. They could win at Jacksonville State. Uh, there's a lot of teams in this conference that are going to have defensive issues. Just something to pay attention to. Uh, if you get into a game where you have to scheme up plays to go score, I'll take Jamie Chadwell all day. The floor on this, probably 7-5, and five, I guess, somewhere around there. Uh, you know, maybe you lose to Jacksonville State and Western Kentucky and Louisiana Tech and you lose at Buffalo early in the season. Maybe New Mexico State surprises you, and Diego Pavia comes in there just dealing. Possible. you know. But I would imagine since that's a Week 2 game, that's going to be a bit of a revenge spot for the players that are still on the uh, still on the roster from last year, considering New Mexico State just wiped the floor with them last year, like 49-14. to 14. But either way, win total set at 9. I'm going to go over. It's minus 110. I mean, this is tough. Uh, this, like, how do you not predict them to do well this season? 
The Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, Sonny Cumbie, heading into his second season. Last year, uh, the wins were not great. Three and nine on the season. Um, but hey, they showed a little bit on offense, and boy, did they hit the uh, the transfer portal and the recruiting trail pretty hard. So let's go ahead and bring it up. You can look at the screen here. You see returning production, adjusted returning production is number 115. Uh just a touch, a smidge over 48%. It's number nine in the conference, number 98 in the country on offense, number 112 on defense. Uh, 3.81 postgame win expectancy last year. You know, almost four games that they should have won. They went three and nine. Uh, they went six and six against the spread. Uh, you look at what they did on offense. They were not completely successful all the time. Number 100 rushing success rate, number 93 in passing success rate, number 96 in offensive PPA per drive. But they were number five in offensive uh, explosivity, right? Explosive play rate. They they would fling it. And now I think that they've got a, you know, they got some, some better guys. Parker McNeil is gone. Landry Liddy is gone. The two quarterbacks, wide receiver Trey Harris is out of there. Um, then on defense, you're losing a couple of guys, of course. Uh, some some key guys. It, Let's look at the offense. Let's look at what uh, what they got. Jake Brown and Scott Parr, of course, the uh, the co-offense coordinators. Transfer quarterback Hank Bachmeyer coming in from Boise State. He was not good in that offense that Andy Avalos was trying to run up there, but I have a feeling that Sonny Cumbie is going to know what to do with this guy. Just just a feeling. Um, let's uh, let's look at who else they're bringing in. Oh, running back Squirrel Williams. Though, both of those guys should be huge contributors. The offensive line has got experience at all five spots. They did lose two starters, but they worked on depth last year, so that's definitely good. Uh, experience up front, defensive line, excuse me. Uh, sorry, sorry. Let's stay on skill position. Smoke Harris can stretch the field. The Baylor uh, transfer running back, Squirrel Williams, he's going to help um, You know the returning running back, Marquise Crosby, to improve the running game. Like This is, they got skill dudes. They got skilled dudes, and I think they got some good offensive linemen in here. I'm pretty high on Louisiana Tech. I think they've got a lot of talent here. Uh, let's move over to the defense. The There's experience up front, right? Defensive lineman, uh, Kiwi Rose. Uh, he can get after the quarterback. Uh, the cornerback, Willie Roberts, locked down corner. There's, there's playmakers on that side. It, I know that they don't have a ton of returning production, but they got playmakers. They got some dynamic dudes. Uh, they got to get more pressures on the quarterback this year. The back seven is kind of young. They did lose, you know, eight of their top 11 tacklers. So, eh, not great, but I believe when you're moving into a new system and whatnot, you know, this it's growing pains. I think this is going to be good for them this year. Uh, the defense at last year, number 109 in PPA per drive allowed, not great, but they were good against the pass. Uh, they were not great on defending explosive plays. Number 126 in explosive play rate allowed, um, just a mess. Just an absolute mess. All right, uh, luck rank last year, number 106. Obviously, they were not very lucky. Their turnover margin, number 94. Uh, they dealt with some injuries here and there. Penalties per game was number 109 in the country. Just not great stuff. But things that you can get fixed going into year two. Uh, their projected record this year, based on talent, based on uh, who they have to play, et cetera, is 6.38 and 5.62. That is uh, their projected you know, win probabilities for this schedule. And this schedule's a, a lot easier than what they've had in the last few years. So I'll, I'll admit that. Um, let's look at the keys to the season here. Their win total sits at five and a half. Uh, the over juiced at minus 170, which makes all the sense in the world. Uh, to win the conference, they're plus 700. Might be something to look at just a little bit. I, I think uh, I think they're not quite going to get there, but, you know, it, it's tough when you got to play uh, Western Kentucky. and Well, you're playing everybody in Conference USA, but you got to play at Jacksonville State, at Liberty. You know, those games are, are pretty difficult. Got to go all the way over to uh, UTEP. Got to play at Middle Tennessee. It's tough games, tough games. Uh, the non-conference is, you know, difficult, but either way, uh, they play Nebraska, they play at SMU, but, you know, I, I think this team could beat North Texas. I, I absolutely think they could beat North Texas. Uh, they got to improve the defense. They allowed 30 points per game and over 240 rushing yards per game. Uh, again, I brought up number 126 in explosiveness allowed. 
That's not good. The offense showed flashes last year with McNeil, the quarterback, but, you know, they added Hank Bachmeyer and Squirrel Williams in there. And Smoke Harris, I think, is going to be awesome. Like, they got dudes. They should be improved. Uh, if you're going to make a bowl game, it's weeks five through nine. I think you got to get three of those, right? You got at UTEP, uh, Western Kentucky, at Middle Tennessee, and then New Mexico State. I think you got to get three of those to make sure that you are, you know, set up to go bowling here. Because if you don't get North Texas, uh, I mean, you're really you're really up against it. So I have a lot of faith in these guys. Uh, the ceiling on this team to me is nine and three. Uh, the floor is three and nine. This team could go any which direction. But with a win total of five and a half, I'm going to go over, even though it's juiced at minus 170, because I, I think they can get a win and a half more than that. I, I like Cumbie. I like what he was trying to do last year. Uh, they're building something here. They're building something in Ruston. And, you know, I'm a fan of, uh, of the development of this program. Let me go ahead and toss in here right quick. If you've not already, go ahead and like the video. Subscribe to the channel. You guys know how to do this thing. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. So if you would... Go ahead and hit subscribe, and uh, and let's hit this goal. Let's hit this goal. We can do it before football season if you guys want to. Uh, but I fully expect sometime in the middle of football season we will get to 10,000 subscribers. Uh, we've been working on this for a long time, so I would certainly appreciate that if you would uh, go ahead, hit the like button, and hit the subscribe button. Middle Tennessee, the Blue Raiders still led by Coach Rick Stockstill. He's still doing his thing over there. Last year, pretty good season. Won the uh, Hawaii Bowl against San Diego State. Definitely was a lot of fun to watch around Christmas time, of course. But it, overall, good year. Big win against Miami, Florida last year. Maybe lost some games that they shouldn't have. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, might be a tough year this year. Let's get into the numbers. Of course, bring it up on your screen. They went eight and five last year. Uh, post game win expectancy, they were seven and five in the regular season, six point nine six and five point oh four. So they won exactly what games they were supposed to. Right, four and four in the conference. Uh, the returning production numbers this year: adjusted returning production number eighty seven in the country, just over fifty seven percent. That's number five in the conference, pretty good. Uh, but the offense. Number 111, defense, number 38. Defense, pretty good. Uh, they were number 25 in PPA per drive last year on defense. So that's definitely good. But the offense wasn't great anyway, at least not efficiency-wise. Number 84 PPA per drive on offense. Um, you know, you look at the explosiveness. Yeah, they were pretty explosive. Number 52, that's explosive play rate on offense. But they weren't great at uh, stopping stuff, right? Number 90, or excuse me, number 83, uh, an explosive play, uh, play rate allowed on defense. Uh, passing success allowed, number 96. They were good against the run, though. Like it, it, It's amazing that they were number 25 in PPA per drive when they were 46 in rushing success allowed, number 96 in passing success. But a lot of this has to do with the fact that they were number four in the country in turnover margin, right? Uh, they lose the quarterback, Chase Cunningham. They lose the running back, Darius Bracey. Lose wide receiver, Jalen Lane. Let's take a look at, you know, let's take a look at the offense first. We'll start with that. Offense, pretty all over the place last year. They put up 45 on Miami. Uh, granted, that's a transition year, Miami. Um, and they found a way to take advantage of that secondary for sure. Uh, but they only put up 14 on UAB, and they only put up 17 on Western Kentucky. You, you lose your quarterback, your top three wide receivers, and your starting center this year. The running game does look pretty solid. They got three of their top four running backs back, along with uh, the Northern Illinois transfer, Jaden Creedle, and they've got over 77% of their offensive line snaps back. Typically, I would think that that means you should be really good on offense. But without Cunningham, I guess it's going to be quarterback Nicholas Variato. I hope I say that right. Uh, I just I, I don't have a lot of faith in what they're doing on offense right now because it's not... It's not a scheme you can just kind of put anybody into, right? You're losing those top three wide receivers. We'll see what happens. Like, this was not a, a running team last year, and your biggest strength is that you've got your, you know, three of your top four running backs back. Um, moving over to the defense, 
you know, still expected to be one of the best in Conference USA. Uh, again, number 38 in returning production, bringing it back over are almost 70% of your returning production. Uh, they lost four of the top seven tacklers, but they returned 13 of the top 17. So, and you got four of the top five tackles for loss guys and your sack leaders back. They were number 25 in PBA per drive. Uh, the secondary wasn't great. Again, some of that had to do with turnover margin. They were just really uh, efficient isn't the word. They were great at making plays when they had to. We'll just say that. Great at making plays when they had to. You look at the win total, it's set at six and a half. Uh, I don't know that I trust that. Uh, Cunningham was a pretty experienced quarterback. He, you know, he took advantage of some things. Uh, he was not great against, um, you know, against some of those uh, stronger defenses in the Conference USA. Uh, but they, man, they took advantage of Miami for sure. And, and they found a way to get 25 points on the board against San Diego State. So that's always good. Then, granted, that's a bowl game. Different set of circumstances around that one. But regardless, uh, let's look at the keys to the season. Um, excuse, well, let's look at this first, number 13 in luck rank. I don't know if you see it there, but that includes a lot of things, right? Injury luck, turnover luck. Again, they were number four in turnover margin last year. Uh, whether or not the opposing team hits field goals, whether or not the opposing team converts fourth downs, like uh, all sorts of stuff goes into the luck rank over at team rankings. But yeah. Uh, they're projected favorites in seven games. They got six toss-ups. So toss-ups to me, uh, games that are projected to be within one score. I don't have nearly as much faith in this team this year. Like, Stock still always finds a way to make his teams competitive, et cetera. But I think this is going to be a drop-off year. Uh, let's look at the keys to the season on this. They took advantage of that number 13 luck rank and number four turnover margin. They need to be more consistent this year, especially on offense. Uh, defense is good, but it's not going to win as many games as you think. I mean, you've got two built-in losses here at Alabama, at Missouri. Uh, I've got a win over Colorado State, but oof, I, it, we'll see. Colorado State, I think, is going to be much improved this year. Um, you know, the road schedule in the conference is is rough, but the fact that this is not the most difficult conference in the country is, is also helpful, right? Uh, they have to play at Western Kentucky, at Liberty, at New Mexico State, at Sam Houston. And those are not, like, awful. Uh, you've got some of the easier games in the conference at home. Like, maybe you'll be able to make that work in Murfreesboro. Uh, Stock still is adept at, you know, pulling rabbits out of his hat. Uh, but, man, he's got to figure out that quarterback position. Like, th this, is, this is big. I have this team at 5-7 and seven this year, so I'm going under the 6.5 win total. Uh, that's juiced at well, no, no, no. That's the uh, that's the underdog side. Uh, to go over is minus one twenty five. I'm going under at minus one hundred five. Uh, better odds on that one. And this is this roster ain't great. I'll just say that roster is not great. Um, and so I've got them at five and seven. The ceiling on this team, I think, is seven and five. Uh, the floor, I think, is three and nine. That's that's where I'm going with this. The ceiling at, at seven and five, that's winning all of the games that you're uh, a projected favorite in, and that's it. I just, while the numbers say that they are projected favorites in seven, I don't know that I necessarily believe that will be the case by the time we get to certain points. So, um, you know, I love Rick Stock still. I think this is going to be a down year. Uh, I might be the minority. I understand that the conference is getting a little bit easier, but yeah. I just, I, I, maybe I should trust him more, but I'm going to go five and seven here. I don't think they make a bowl this year. Uh, maybe they're prepping for next year. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be a good defense. That offense, huh. I mean, we'll see. We'll see about Middle Tennessee. New Mexico State and Coach Jerry Kill. If you've watched this show for any amount of time, you know how much I love this coach, but even he surprised me last year with how quickly he was able to get this turned around. Uh, I did not believe that that roster was capable of making it to a bowl game, much less winning one. And yet, seven and six last year, not too shabby. Let's pull it up on the screen so you can take a look at what is going on uh, for this season. Number 49 in returning production, adjusted return, uh, returning production. That's number three in this conference. It's their first year in Conference USA, so that's definitely good. Um, 
went eight and five against the spread last year. So that's definitely awesome. They're, you know, they were six and six last year. Post game win expectancy was 6.42 and 5.58. So they actually underperformed, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, you know, only won six games in the regular season, uh, but they were supposed to win 6.42. I understand you can't win half a game. I get that. But yeah, uh, kind of surprising to see how well this team was able to work. Uh, just, just crazy. Uh, the offensive coordinator, Tim Beck. Not that Tim Beck. Not the Coastal Carolina coach. Just a heads up. Uh, the wide receiver, Justice Powers, is gone. Right tackle, uh, O'Mary. You lose a few guys on defense as well. They're number 104 in returning production on defense. So that's not great, considering the defense is what really uh, led them in the right direction last year. Uh, but you're number 10 in returning production on offense. Over 80% coming back this year. That's uh, That's always a good thing. All right. Let's start off with the offense here. Uh, the quarterback, Diego Pavia, was number one in QBR in the last five games of the season. And then they still brought in a transfer quarterback, Eli Stewers, from Texas A&M. Uh, the offensive line is expected to be strong. You know, 70% returning snaps this year. The skill positions are loaded. Uh, running back, Star Thomas and Jamani Jones. They're dependable. The wide receivers, Cordell David, Jonathan Brady. They can stretch the field. Both of them over 13 and a half yards per catch last season. Uh, the offensive numbers were not great, right? Number 103 PPA per drive for the full season. Those were significantly better in the back half of the season. I mean, they were putrid early, but man, did they get that thing turned around. Um, rushing success rate number 116, passing success number 109, but they were number nine in offensive explosive play rate. So Jerry Kill knows what's up. Like he he understood he was able to take some risks last year with that offense, and they found a way to make it work. Uh, you know, going over to the defense, I mean, they were number 49 in PPA per drive allowed on defense, number 105 in rushing success rate. Um, you know, they, they weren't great at stopping the run, but they were number 42 in passing success allowed and number 11 in defensive explosive play rate allowed. Uh, they lost 50% of their quarterback pressures from last year, but... I got faith in this year's front seven uh, to get after the quarterback. The secondary, they only forced seven interceptions in 2022. Four of those five guys that got those interceptions are gone this year. Uh, I would imagine you're going to see some playmakers on that defense. Uh, they were number 29 in total defense, number 49 in PPA per drive allowed. So a little bit of a difference there. Uh, they were great at stopping explosives. But again, the front seven, they got to be better. They got to stop the run this year. Uh, the key players. Whoever starts a quarterback, whether it's Diego Pavia or Eli Stowers, uh, the running backs, the wide receivers, of course, key players, linebackers, Keyshawn Elliott, and uh, the safety, Dylan Early, are going to be key players. They were number 44 in luck rank last year, uh, which is pretty good considering they were number 98 in turnover margin. So you got to you gotta clean up the turnovers, got to clean up the penalties. They were number 92 in uh, penalties per game as well. And, this is a roster that I did not have a lot of faith in last year. I feel like Jerry Kill knows how to get the most out of his players. And that's you can't look at recruiting rankings with that bunch. But when you're looking at a schedule like this, uh, I got a lot of faith in this team this year. Their win total sits at five and a half. Their projected favorites in five games, they've got eight games that I believe are going to be toss-ups. And those are games that are... Uh, that have a projected spread within one score. So I'm looking at this record. Again, the win total is five and a half. They're playing 13 games because they get to play at Hawaii uh, early, well, late September. Early in the schedule, but late September. Let's look at the keys to the season. Okay, it will take me off the screen for this one. Uh, they finished last season five and one in their last six, and they got a bowl victory. Uh, the schedule is... A lot more difficult, or a little more difficult, I guess, on the back end here. Uh, but the first eight games are all winnable. Like, I know they got to play at Liberty, but remember, they'd smoked Liberty last year, 49 to 14. I think it's going to be a different bunch that they have to play this year, but, eh, you know. Uh, I brought up cleaning up the turnovers and the penalties. Uh, this team is not talented enough to overcome that kind of stuff. They were minus 10 in turnovers in their first five games last year. But you look at the last seven games, they were, they were plus six in those. Uh, that one game in the middle, I know they played 13 last year. Uh, that one game in the middle, they were even on it. So 
Just saying. But plus six in the last seven games, that's an improvement. Uh, if they can avoid the lows of the first five games this season, like this could be a massive year for them. Again, 13 games to make it over five and a half wins. Uh, I believe in that. I think they're going to beat UMass right out of the gate. I mean, they're a 10-point favorite in that one. Western Illinois, FCS school. So you start out with two wins there, if you can. Of course, you got to beat UMass first. But you you get two wins there, and then, you know, you lose at Liberty. I don't think there's any shame in that. Jamie Chadwell coming in, I, I think that bunch is going to be fired up. Uh, then you have to go play at New Mexico. I've got that one as a loss. You could easily see that as a win, right? Uh, you play at Hawaii. I think that's a win. FIU, that's a win. Sam Houston at home, that's a win. At UTEP, I think that's a win. Then you get into the tough stuff, right? At Louisiana Tech, Middle Tennessee, at Western Kentucky, at Auburn, before you close up shop with Jacksonville State at home. I think they can get a win and a half over, maybe even two and a half wins over this five and a half win total. Uh, it's juiced at minus 120 to the over. I got faith here. I got a lot of faith. So I've got them going seven and six on this. Uh, I like this team. I like this coach. Uh, the ceiling for this team, I think, is nine and four this year. I think the floor, floor is probably four and nine, right? I mean, this is not a uh, a great team by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, you get one thing go wrong, and it could certainly cause you to lose some games that look very, very winnable right now. Uh, but yeah, I'm... I'm a fan of this bunch. I like what Jerry Kill is doing with developing the program. I am going to take them to go over. Sam Houston State, the Bearcats. All right, look, is KC Keeler a genius? Or was that maybe a mistake, redshirting so many of those guys last year? I mean, obviously, we will see. Uh, but whew, let's, uh, let's get into it. All right, pulling up the numbers here. Returning production, they're number 13 in the country. That ain't bad. Number 32 on offense, number seven on defense. Uh, they got a lot of guys that are very, very familiar with what they're doing. The numbers that you see on the screen are their FCS numbers from last year mixed in with, of course, all of the FBS numbers from this year. So just something to pay attention to as you're looking. Um, you look at that PPA margin, number 100. Their offense was putrid last year. Just awful. But, hey, I think that's going to get better because they got Grant Gannell coming in. They got some other guys uh, that, that can play quarterback, but obviously we'll see. Uh, there's not a lot to take away from last year's numbers, really, because they got so many guys that are going to be a little bit different this year. Um, but that offense, I think, is still, you know, we'll see what ends up happening with it. Uh, the projected record this year is 3.4 and 8.6. The win total sits at 4. It is juiced to the under. Minus 120 to go under, minus 110 to go over, uh, let's let's take a look at this. They were number 32 in turnover margin, number 35 in penalties per game, so the foundation of this team is pretty good. They're well coached. You know this, but they were not super experienced last year. Let's start on offense. You lost two starting offensive linemen from last season. Uh, the three returning quarterbacks uh, were under 50% completion, but they did bring in uh, Xavier Ward. They brought in Grant Cannell as transfers. I think the quarterback position is going to be upgraded. Uh, the question on offense, of course, does well, really for the whole team, do the red shirts take a while to knock the rust off? Uh, they lost their running back. They had the most carries, and the wide receiver that had the most targets. I, I think they still got some dudes. They still got dudes on defense. Clayton Carlin, Joe Morris, co-DCs here. Uh, they're returning nine of their top 11 tacklers on defense. They brought in three defensive line transfers, but they are losing 50% of their quarterback pressures from last season, uh, and that was a pretty good defense last year. I mean, you look at it, number 11 in defensive PPA per drive allowed last year, number 14 rushing success allowed, number nine in passing success allowed. They weren't great at stopping explosive plays. Eh, it is what it is. Uh, you you kind of live with that sometimes. The secondary looks to be pretty strong. And experienced this year. Uh, they only gave up 4.7 yards per play last year uh, overall as a defense. This team this season is expected to be a favorite or a projected favorite in four games. They got five toss-ups. Again, that's games that the projected spread is uh, within one score. Let's look at the keys to the season on this. Uh, again, the win total sits at four. Um, will take me off the screen. 
They redshirted 15 players in the final FCS season. So obviously you're not going to be as good when you are, you know, on purpose taking guys off the field. Keeler won the 2020 FCS title, started the fall season 11 and 0 before they lost in the playoffs. This guy knows what he's doing. We have seen FCS programs come into the FBS and be successful immediately. This is not the most difficult schedule in the world. However, bring me back up here. At BYU, Air Force, at Houston, Jacksonville State, at Liberty, at New Mexico State to start things off. Uh, where's your warm-up? Where, where are you supposed to be able to get that first win? Like maybe Jacksonville State coming to Sam Houston State, but with Rich Rodriguez, that was a pretty good team last year. Uh, then you got to play at Liberty. And again, you've already heard how much I love New Mexico State. I, I got three wins in the middle of the season. Florida International, UTEP, Kennesaw State. I think they'll beat Middle Tennessee at the end of the year. I don't think they win in Ruston. I don't think that they win uh, at Western Kentucky. Uh, this is, I got them four and eight this year. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, the ceiling for this team, I think, is six and six. I think it's going to take a little bit of time to acclimate to uh, FBS. But obviously, we'll see. Uh, the floor for this team, I think, could be pretty low. Uh, Grant Gannell, while he is, I mean, he's just been all over the place, right? I mean, he's transferred to a ton of places. Um, he was at Memphis for a little bit. He went to Arizona. He couldn't get on the field at any of these places. He was dealing with injuries, all that kind of stuff. We'll see what Xavier Ward is. Um, but I think the floor could be 2-10. and 10. If this offense is not good in that league, yikes. It's going to be crazy. So 4-8 uh, and eight record prediction for me on, on Sam Houston State. Uh, this one's going to be interesting to watch this year. The UTEP Miners. Dana DeMell has done a good job with this bunch. They went 5-7 and seven last year, made it to a bowl game the year before. Uh, that hadn't been done there in quite some time. Like UTEP is not an easy place to win. They do have an incredibly passionate fan base that appreciates when they see a coach that's working really hard. So let's go ahead and pull up on the screen. Look at what we uh, look at what we have coming into this season. Number ninety-five in returning production, adjusted returning production in the country. Uh, number one hundred two on offense. Number seventy-eight on defense. Their post-game win expectancy last year. Yes, they went five and seven. Uh, the record showed. At, at least with post-game win expectancy, they were 4.49 and 7.51. Not great. Four and a half wins, so they actually exceeded expectations for the post-game win expectancy, so is what it is. Uh, they lose their backup quarterback this year. They lose uh, the running back, Ronald, uh, sorry, Ronald Awat. Uh, they lose Ronaldo Flores, uh, the wide receiver. They lose uh, right tackle, Jeremiah Byers, and then they got some dudes on defense. Uh, that are going to be gone as well, Tyreek James, et cetera. The numbers weren't very good last year. Um, you know, we'll just move into the offense. How's that? Let's move into the offense. Uh, who's going to back up the quarterback? Grant Hardison, he's a vet. He's experienced. Lost a lot of weapons, though, and he did have to miss two games last year. Uh, you do get uh, the wide receiver Tyron Smith back from Texas A&M, so that's, you know, that's positive. I... I look at this, right? Uh, you lost three of your top four rushers from 2022, but the running back Hankins, I think is, I think he's the real deal. Deion Hankins. Um, they need to improve their overall efficiency. They were number 81 PPA per drive on offense last year. Number 74 rushing success, number 92 passing success. They were kind of explosive. Uh, so maybe they'll continue that with Smith coming back at wide receiver. Uh, but you got to stop turning the ball over. Your roster is not efficient enough. It's not good enough to withstand giving the ball to the other team. They were number 107 in turnover margin last year. Uh, they're bringing in a bunch of JUCOs. I mean, a whole bunch of JUCOs. Uh, just all over the place. So, we'll see if that helps on offense. Who knows? Uh, moving over to the defense, they're losing five of the top seven tacklers, including their top two tackles for loss and sack leaders. They got playmakers at edge with Thompson and Amuale. I hope I said that right. You guys can correct me. Um, and then, of course, you've got uh, the defensive tackle, Keenan Stewart. Uh, they're going to rely on transfers and Jucos on defense, like uh, a lot of a lot of them. Is it enough talent coming in to improve number 89 uh, PPA per drive, number 97 yards per play defense? Eh, we'll see. We'll see. 
number 90 in luck rank last year. So if that turns around at all, maybe the ball, uh, the ball bounces their way a couple more times. That could be helpful. We shall see. Their win total this year is five and a half. And it's juiced to the over. And I can't figure this out. I guess it's an easier schedule, but you still got to play at Northwestern, which Northwestern loses to all of their non-conference teams. Uh, no offense, Westlot Pirates boys. But they got to play at Arizona. They got to play UNLV in non-conference. They start out at Jacksonville State. Uh, the road schedule is not super daunting, right? At Jacksonville State, at Florida International, at Sam Houston, and then Liberty. But it's not like the talent on this roster is significantly better than what's on those other rosters. So that means that your difficult home games, or I guess your home games, are more difficult. You got to play Liberty at home, Western Kentucky at home, New Mexico State at home, Louisiana Tech at home, and UNLV. Uh, I'm pretty high on those guys this year with Barry Odom coming in. I, I, I don't see how you get to six wins. Like I'd, I'd see if everything goes exactly right, uh, because you look at the the projected record as far as win probability is concerned, at least early in the season, 4.8 and 7.2. So I, I don't even have yet five wins right now. And that's where this gets a little crazy. They're projected favorites in three games. Uh, they've got eight toss-ups, and that is, you know, the eight toss-ups are games that the projected spread is within a score. So eight points or less. Let's look at the, uh, the keys to the season. Take me off the screen here. Dana DeMell has gone 12 and 13 in the last two years. Uh, this could be the most difficult after they lost so much talent and experience, right? Again, number 95 in returning production. That's uh, just over 54%. It's not great. It's not great. Uh, they are only projected favorites in three games. Uh, the experienced quarterback could be the deciding factor in some of these. Uh, and of course, now that you got Tyron Smith back, that could also help as well. Uh, the key to the season is how quickly the the JUCO guys can come in. You've got at least 16 in this recruiting class. Uh, how quickly can they gel running Demel's stuff right? Like, I, I don't have a lot of faith in this this year. Uh, I think this might be a rough year for UTEP. I, I don't think it's going to be all that easy. I, I've got them going three and nine. I've got wins over Middle Tennessee, uh, Incarnate Word, and Jacksonville State. The rest of that schedule looks tough. And I just don't buy the roster. Maybe I'm nuts. I mean, I, my, I'm going a win and a like 1.8 wins under my projected record. So I, I think three and nine here. Uh, but you guys correct me. Tell me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, I think the ceiling for this team is to make a bowl game, six and six. I think the floor could be like one and 11. I mean, I think it's going to be difficult. So. Not a lot of faith for the UTEP Miners this year, but they have proven me wrong before. We'll see if they can do it again. Old Tyson Helton and the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. WKU, 9-5 and five last year. And would you look at that? They get their quarterback back this year. Let's go on and pull up the numbers. We'll take a look at what we're uh, dealing with here. Number 93 in returning production in the country, just over 54%. Uh, number 43 on offense, number 128 on defense. So Tyson Summers doesn't have a whole lot of familiar faces to work with, uh, at least not guys that were on the field last year. Uh, you look at their numbers from last year, number 16 PPA margin, number 36 uh, PPA per drive on offense, number 27 PPA per drive on defense. This was a pretty good team last year. Uh, now I, I had them going under the 8.5, even with 13 games. And that ended up being right. But, man, what a show did they put on in that bowl game against South Alabama. Just unbelievable. Uh, they do lose a few big-time guys, right? Uh, Robichaw, the running back. Uh, Daywood Davis, of course, the wide receiver. You lose uh, tackle Gunner Britton, center Rusty Stats. Those guys all uh, – some of them transferred out, of course. Some of them graduated as well. Uh, you lose the offensive coordinator. Again, you got Drew Hollingshead coming in. Uh, he – you know, was from Mississippi State. He learned under Mike Leach for uh, several years there. Uh, let's let's talk about this offense. Let's start off with this. Austin Reed coming back, wide receiver Malachi Corley coming back. Uh, just awesome passing offense last year. But here's the issue. You lost half of the targets, and 
you lost two starting offensive linemen. On top of that, while the offense was good, they were number 94 in red zone conversion percentage and number 88 in points per opportunity, and that's drives that go inside the opponent 40-yard line. You got to improve that. You got to get more consistent with that. They were number 81 in giveaways per game, so you got to cut out the turnovers here. Uh, their turnover margin was great, but that had a lot to do with the defense. And they were number 13 in turnover margin last year. Uh, and, and with a, by the way, their luck rank was number 112, uh, and that's with having a turnover margin of number 13. So just ridiculous. Uh, offense was good. Offense was pretty good. They need to be more efficient instead of explosive. Uh, they were number seven in explosive play rate. So, yeah, rushing, they did not run the ball all that well. But, hey, it is what it is. This is a passing offense. Uh, I think they've gotten to the point where they have a system and the offensive coordinators that come in just run the system. That's what I, That's what I think. We'll see, though. Obviously, it helps to get your quarterback and your leading receiver back. So, uh, on defense, Tyson Summers bunch they were they were good last year. Like overall, like it, as far as overall efficiency, maybe not great. But they were good at stopping explosive plays. Number twenty five there. Uh, they were good just overall. Number twenty seven PPA per drive allowed. That's uh, predicted points added, by the way, for anybody that's asking. It, you look at this bunch. Um, you're losing ten of the top fifteen tacklers. Uh, seven of the top nine tackles for loss uh, guys, not, or four of the top six uh, sack leaders, and then losing 56% of quarterback pressures. Like, in their losses, the defense was the absolute worst spot there. It's what led to those losses. They allowed 36 points per game in their losses. Are the new faces that are coming in going to help fix that? Uh, the defense had had trouble getting stops, and they have. For multiple years, they're two and seven in one score games the last two years. Number 113 in red zone uh, conversion defense. That's worse than the offense was. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, can they continue the turnovers? They were number five in the country in takeaways. It, obviously, we'll see. Um, they're projected favorites in 10 games this year. They've got three toss ups. The win total sits at eight and a half here. Obviously, a lot of people love the quarterback, et cetera. Uh, to go over the eight and a half is plus 110. It is juiced heavily to the under uh, at minus 140. You know, you got some tough games. USF, you got at Ohio State, at Troy. Uh, those are those are difficult games. But the conference slate, you get Liberty at home, New Mexico State at home, um, Middle Tennessee at home, Sam Houston at home. So you got things uh, that might be in your favor. We'll just say that. Uh, let's look at the keys to the season here. Get me off the screen. Uh, the team has has lost a lot, but they have got you know a lot of you know they got a they got a lot of leaders. I'll say that. Uh, and while there's a new offense coordinator, I mean it's the fourth one in four years. They just they know how to deal with this at this point. Uh, there's still a lot of staff there that has been there. So it's it's the opposite on the defense. They still got the defensive coordinator, but. Uh, They've just completely turned over the position group over there. Uh, Austin Reed may be the best quarterback in the league, uh, even with some new offensive line and, and skill pieces. Defense significantly improved last year, and I'll tell you this, while the returning production is not good, and, and when I say not good, uh, it's less than 40% back, there are still a lot of guys here that have been in the system and understand what it is that Tyson Summers wants them to do. My record prediction here, Look, I'm going over this year. I'm going over the eight and a half. I, I I feel good about this team. I think once you get through the first four games and everybody's got a chance to like collect themselves and you've played against tough guys like Ohio State at Troy, uh, I think they lose to USF because I think Alex Golesh is going to come in and just bombs away with uh, Jerry Bohannon and a bunch. But look, you get to the conference late, you're going to know what you're doing. I think this is a talented bunch. I like Tyson Helton. I like the defense. Um, these are guys that have been in the system. I'm going nine and three on my prediction here. Uh, I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments what, what you think this record will be. The ceiling on this team, I think, is 10 and two. Uh, the floor, I think, is seven and five. I still think they're that good. As long as Austin Reed is healthy and whatnot, they, I think they're going to be able to get to seven pretty easily. I think they get to nine. They could get to 10. 10 is the ceiling on this bunch. Western Kentucky. Uh, I like this team a lot. I've got them going undefeated in conference. 
Um, you know, obviously we'll see what happens, but uh, gracious, I, I like this team uh, quite a bit. All right, so who is going to play in the Conference USA title game? And my prediction is Liberty and Western Kentucky. I believe that those two will play for it, uh, and I think that Liberty, with Jamie Chadwell, with the plethora of talent that they have, I think that they will win their first year in the Conference USA. Uh, Western Kentucky is good. I think they're going to be rolling by the time they get to December, but... I got a lot of faith in Jamie Chadwell. You guys know how much I like him, but that's two good coaches just going at it in December. Uh, So give me Liberty to win the conference. Uh, Their odds, let's see if I can pull it up. Their odds right now are sitting at plus 250 to win the conference. I think they can get there. I think they can get there. All right, that is going to wrap things up for us right here on Winning Cures Everything You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for watching the show and supporting as much as you do. Uh, I don't know how to express my gratitude in any other way. You guys are fantastic. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it out with your friends, tell people about it, go visit the merch store. You guys know how this thing works. Uh, I'm an independent guy. This is my show. It's a one-man operation. Again, I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, so anytime you hit that subscribe button, it certainly helps. Uh, I've got way more people that watch the show uh, that are not subscribed on YouTube than are, which is a little little upsetting, <laughs> but, but I think we're going to be all right. Uh, go make sure that you are signed up over at BetUS. Make sure you check out the BetUS college football show. Next one up is going to be July 5th. It's a Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, make sure that you get signed up over there. We're going to be doing early game previews again, some week zero, week one, and week two games. So we're going to do a little bit of a look ahead. Uh, after that, we got July 19th. Um, after that, August 2nd. And then we start it weekly as we get into the season. It's going to be a good year. Going to be a good year. So check it out. Go and sign up at BetUS.com where the game begins. And make sure that you are subscribed to the BetUS College Football Show. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get out of here. You guys are fantastic. Let me know in the comments who you think is going to win the conference. Uh, all that fun stuff. I think I think that's all that we got to do. All right. With that said, you guys take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football. And, of course, we hope all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.